Welcome back to the channel. This video is looking at the river and in particular the river system. The different components and zones and parts that make up a, a river in general and looking at all the terms and processes and definitions that make up the foundation of hydrology. So a river is a beautiful connection of flowing water over the Earth's surface, over terrain and relief and topography. But perhaps you don't know that it's a larger system. Perhaps you live in a certain area where you see a river on a certain part. But if you take a larger kind of step back and see the whole system, it is quite magnificent. In this video, we're going to look at different parts of that system as a whole. So this is the general drawing of a river system and we're going to break this into three components or three zones and the main components are going to be the different types of streams that you find in a river system so the first will be this from smallest to largest would be the creek and the brook which are very small trickles or flows of water through channels and then you get the regular streams that can change in size and volume and discharge and then eventually end up as a river which is generally a large version of a stream which is going to accumulate lots lots of water at a certain part of the river and the system is broken into three parts where you find each of the river parts or stream parts and these are called orders now the orders go from one to two three and four the first order stream are very small brooks and creeks second order is where they join up in a confluence where they meet and have the addition of volume of water and second order stream is going to be fed by first order streams and then eventually connect again into a third order stream with more volume of water larger discharge larger channel generally and then eventually turn into a fourth order stream usually at the end of the river's life at the outlet or the mouth and the fourth order stream will be the one that enters usually the ocean at sea level so where does this water come from to produce such a stream or river in different orders now the Water accumulates at the lowest elevation point on the Earth's surface, depends on where it is, based on elevation and based on different locations, some more mountainous, some more flat, and different gradients and steepness of the Earth's surface. So the water is going to accumulate mostly or pretty much from precip, meteoric water, which means it originates from the atmosphere and falls as precip. Could also get some snow melt in high elevations and glacial melt. But meteoric water is generally the source, and then it's going to flow within a certain catchment area or drainage basin or watershed, whereby the elevation and contours of the topography will dictate which direction the water is going to flow, and it's going to flow to accumulate into one, generally one stream, but there are different types of drainage basins based on topography and the geology of the rock. You also get a thing called base flow, which is the amount of water that's kind of fed into the stream or river by the groundwater. This is not to do with a meteoric water, but the water that comes from the ground into the river, which again originally comes from precip via infiltration, percolation, and interflow. So we can break this river system down into three distinct zones or parts or components. So zone one is the upper basin, the headwaters, the source, the area where it's high elevation, where you get the small first and second and third order streams and all the tributaries and the cre creeks and brooks flowing downhill, the high steeper gradients flowing faster with, with higher velocity and high energy down to a lo lower elevation in the headwaters where the river starts basically. Then you get the mid basin or the mature area or the transportation zone whereby the third or fourth order streams are flowing down from the high elevation from the headwaters down towards the, the output, the exit or the end of the lifespan of the river. And the middle course involves certain features like meandering and oxbow lakes and different uh, depositional and erosional characteristics. And then eventually it's going to flow down to the third zone or the third area or section called the lower basin or the depositional zone, whereby this is a very old part of the river. The water's been taking a long time to get down there, and it's usually a flatter terrain, which includes certain areas like floodplains and marshes and wetlands, still meandering, still with slight erosional processes, but definitely a lot more deposition of the sediment being carried down by the river. So the three distinct zones. 
So what does a river do? What's the purpose of function? The well, function is to transport and create a channel of least resistance from the rain or precip hitting the ground to eventually travel and end up in back in the ocean as part of the water cycle. Now this includes both the infiltration, percolation, interflow through soil and groundwater, the water table and rainfall and, and climate changes and flooding and seasonal changes through ice melt or glacial melt based on elevation location, but the purpose is to transport water from the surface of the earth back to the ocean. And it's going to, whilst doing that, transport sediment and material down the earth's surface back to the ocean. It will deposit that sediment in different areas and it will obviously produce this sediment. It will have a large amount of erosional qualities and weathering qualities, which will break down, remove and transport that material down to a low, lower elevation. And as the water's moving, you also get both erosion and weathering happen at the same time as water is a fantastic erosional agent and weathering qualities like both mechanical and chemical weathering. So such erosional qualities include abrasion or corrosion and hydraulic action and attrition. So hydraulic action is just the action of the water hitting against the riverbed or river banks. The attrition is the rocks versus rocks getting smoother, getting hit together. And abrasion is again using the rocks to smash against the sides of the river, the, the bank or the riverbed to remove and take away material. Then you have the transportation, the the movement. Again, water can transport material through various means. Either it can push it along the riverbed, which is going to be traction. It can bounce it along the water bed in the water, which is called saltation. And it can also hold the smaller, lighter, less dense material in suspension and also in solution, which is dissolved. Then you have the deposition. So deposition can be the drop-in or dumping of that sediment at a certain location when the water's energy is reduced or lost, so it cannot have enough energy to hold the material based on the size and mass of each material, ranging from large boulders and rocks down to the smallest silt, sand, and clay, which form alluvium. So these areas of the river can deposit this material in certain areas based on the velocity and energy of that river and that's also linked to the certain zone which that happens. Zone 1, which is the headwaters, has a lot more energy and fast moving water that could transport and move a lot larger material, whereas the zone 3, which is the zone, the mature area, an old area of the river, is going to have less energy and less velocity of water, therefore can carry less so you get much more deposition in that zone. So for features of the river in certain areas, we're looking at the upper headwater zone, which has the higher velocity water, the more turbulent water versus laminar flow. You have rapids, you have waterfalls, you have a vertical erosion profile with very V-shaped valleys and lots of removal of sediment. Then we come down to zone two, which is the middle course of the river, the mature course where the gradient is going to be less steep and more flat and you're going to have a larger channel width caused by both lateral erosion and vertical erosion but more lateral erosion so the width of the channel gets wider as the water kind of digs out and creates a wider area for the water to flow in the channel which increases the discharge of that river or stream basically third order or fourth order then we also get meandering the curvation or the curving of the water based on the topography, based on the easiest way to go, based on floods. You get the deposition of sandbars and bars on the sides of the corners. You get the change in velocity of the water channel, river channel, where you have certain areas that are fast moving water, areas that are slow moving water, and with the slow moving water, you get more deposition. With the fast moving water, you get more erosion, so that balance in the channel. Then we come down to the third area, the area of deposition close to the mouth or the river delta or the outlet where the water is going to flow into a brackish area or location, which is the combination of both fresh and salt water by the coastline based on topography and relief, and it's going to eventually flow into the ocean. Now, these brackish waters can include a sound, a bay, an estuary, a bayou, a lagoon, a wetlands, a marsh, either fresh or salty marsh or salt marsh, 
and obviously swamps. Now, this area of low-lying ground, relief is going to create a wider channel and eventually again flow into the ocean. And this area where it's going to flow into the ocean, it's going to fan out and create a larger area, and this is called a river delta. Delta has various shapes and landforms created by deposition and alluvium, which is the accumulation of sandstone and clay in different formations and amounts and can dictate how the water flows and looks and can change the design of the outlets of that river into the ocean. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.